short walk from the playground takes you to the green heart of the Dorothy Stringer Secondary in Brighton. This building, once derelict in an overgrown corner of the school grounds, is now an eco-centre, surrounded by a managed woodland and a nature reserve. Together they provide a rich resource for teaching and learning. The school takes a twin-track approach to the environment. Rob is sustainability coordinator and Dan is biodiversity coordinator. We've always felt that to understand why we need to live a sustainable lifestyle, you need to contextualise that and understand why biodiversity is important. Yes, we do need to um, make sure that we're recycling and conscious of our energy consumption and those things, but if we don't have an appreciation for the wild life around us, then uh, what's the point in all that? Today, the eco-centre is being used for a topical demonstration. This is the Gulf of Mexico, and this is how the oil should have been capped by BP. But you succeeded where BP failed. We have succeeded where BP failed, but we, we were easier. The whole centre is an experiment. Pupils can monitor the impact of different insulation materials, including wool, dog hair and human hair, some of it the product of a sponsored head shave. We found that they're all similar insulators, but suitable seems to be the best. Other features include this sun pipe, which intensifies natural light, while hot water is provided by a solar panel. This is one of 22 panels around the school, sponsored by a green school scheme. It's much more sustainable to work with buildings that you've already got, rather than knocking something down and building an environmentally friendly building. There's no shortage of locations that demonstrate the abundance and diversity of life. And the school wants to exploit them as part of its involvement in the International Year of Biodiversity. And this response here of er uh, is unfamiliarity. And one of the things that we're commonly saying is, no, not er, uh, wow. It's so beautiful. Adjacent to the woodland is this stretch of chalk grassland, which is being developed as a butterfly haven. The ground has been contoured to create microclimates for the rare Sussex Blue. It's a school project that's acted as the catalyst for the national big butterfly count. The scheme started here at Dorothy Stringer High School uh, and, and it has inspired Marks and Spencers and uh, butterfly conservation to take it further onto a national level. Last year we had the small blue butterfly colonised the site and this year, just two days ago in fact, we found four small blues flying around and it's the earliest site in Sussex so it seems that we've got something right. These pupils however are not looking for butterflies but bees and they're identifying them in French. And we've seen a bourdon au corps noir et carouche. This exercise is being reflected across the channel at a partner school in Normandy, where pupils are identifying bees in English. Obviously everything we have to do it has to be integrated into curriculum, but it's not just about the children in the school. We do an awful lot of outreach work with all kinds of different organisations within Brighton and Hove. And if you can raise people's bioliteracy, if you can make them aware of why it's important to look after species, then we're at half the battle is won. Right, we look out to the right now. I'm pleased to say it looks like we've got some light. Community links also involve working with conservationists from the RSPB. That's probably very well known by its colour. Is it a green finch? Well, it is important to like learn about the wildlife around where you live so that you can like encourage it so that it doesn't run out or anything. Is anyone here need The community police officer is another regular visitor to demonstrate bushcraft. It's a lesson in working with nature and also showing that knives are tools, not weapons. You take your knife, take the back of the blade and scrape down and then you've got a flame. The International Year of Biodiversity is being celebrated across the school but is most visible here in the canteen. And also in this textile class where the theme is recycled fashion. It's a shoulder piece that I made out of my dad's old jeans. Does he know? Yeah. <laughs> Sustainable development is a great route for children to feel like the work that they're doing has some real value, has some real connection, has some sense of this is important, this is something that affects me and it affects my future. Each and every single one of us has to make a personal commitment. Really, that's what it's all about. And that's what we're trying to do all the time at Dorothy Stringer, equipping the children for their future so that they're able to act and make a difference.